You said something before about um, how politicians claim they know what the public wants. And with social media these days, how do, how do politicians and, and political parties know what the public wants? Well, you know, my, my line is you don't necessarily give the public back what the public wants. You give them what the public needs. If you give them too much of it, they get fed up with you. But, but you try to give them what they need, you know. I mean, there's a nice, I think there's a nice demonstration of the point uh, someone made that uh, this has been part of the commentary about the demise of, uh, of Steve Jobs and, and Apple. Uh, and it's just as true of him as it is of public life. What he didn't do was to poll his customer base to see how he could improve his product or give them what they wanted. He gave them a completely new idea of something which they had not conceived, you see? And I think this is true in public life too. In the end, the key ingredient in a public life is imagination, you know? And you imagine something better, you try and bring people with you to get there. Sometimes you make it, sometimes you don't. The worst of it is to be subject to the response, the, re the reactionary response of the polling and the conversation backwards and forwards. I still think the big ideas have their own currency and their own momentum. And, in, and it's in the absence of the bigger ideas, the, the big and truthful conversation, that all the static rises. The static's there while ever there is a, there is a void in the, in the thing. So, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't believe that social media is going to displace the big national conversation, but it will certainly displace it when, while ever there isn't one. What does it take for, what would it take for a political culture to actually be more um, invigorated by ideas rather than electability? Well, there, there are a lot of ideas. It's, it's not true to say there are not ideas around, but I think what you need, I, I said it before about imagination. Imagination and courage are the two things that make up political leadership. And the big sweeps, you know, the, 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 the big schematic is what, is what we need. Um, the other bits of the story will fall into place. They're, they'll be there. But that does require absenting yourself from the, from the sort of hourly news cycle. You know, I mean, I think leaders, leaders need time to think and they need time to, to make the construct. Because a prime minister, for instance, or a senior minister, but a prime minister has a whole system to think about. It's very hard to think of, productively about the whole system, responding to two radio interviews a day and all the rest of the social chit chat that goes, goes on. So, so therefore, there's gotta be a premium back on leadership and, and, the, and the offices. I think the political system is just now too much. I mean, I said the other day about the, the late line program, you know, ministers going on the late line program. I mean, they, it just drags the position of ministers in the government down. You know, they're sharing a program with people who've got no mandate for anything, you know? So therefore, the government having courage about what it is and what it stands for, what its prerogatives are, but more than that, what its responsibilities are, is the way to approach government again, not to be everything to all people, available for every Ratso program. You go on, you know, every comment, everything, you know, which is where it is now. As a result, the whole system goes down and the ability to stand back and think and lead the place is, is jeopardised.